basically landscape the whole garden, haven't we? Yeah. We've had a casualty. It's not even funny. <laughs> what? Bear in mind he's driven to Birmingham yeah. to get this wood. That's hilarious. Literally, my whole body's like, I think my hairs have stood up. Coming to our garden. Hi everyone, welcome back. We are bringing you the garden renovation part two, aren't we? Finally. I know there are so many of you that have been waiting for this video for months and we are genuinely sorry, but it was a big job, wasn't it? It was. It was a big job. For anyone that's clicked on this video and hasn't seen garden renovation part one, we will link it below. Go back and watch that because honestly, we have done such a massive, we, Joe and like his dad and my dad and his uncle did a massive renovation to the garden. Basically landscape the whole garden, aren't we? Yeah. What have we done since the last time? Yeah, we've... we need to rewind. Yeah. So last time we showed you, it was around June time, wasn't it? We Just before we went away, we had all of the patio laid and the planters were built, but they were empty in the last video, weren't they? They were, they were literally just like, I think they were just blocks. Yeah, they were just blocks and we covered over the top so we could sit on them. But now we've got plants in them, haven't we? We have, we planted plants. So we got a load of plants from a garden centre not too far away and it was super cheap. One thing we learned is that plants for the garden are really expensive. So if you can find like a, like a more like a wholesaler kind of garden yeah. centre, rather than going to somewhere like Frost, you're going to get the plants for a lot cheaper because they genuinely are so expensive. And when yeah. you're trying to feel like massive planters of them, you obviously need quite a few. When we were building the planters, I was thinking, blimey, these planters are pretty big. <laughs> but now looking at them, they're not actually, like, they don't look too big. Like, they're, they're just perfect. really deep, weren't they? They were deep, yeah. I think it's, it's sunk quite a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, so we had to like sink. We had to remove the plants and put more soil in yeah. to like bring the level up again. So, so we've just planted the plants in the planters and filled it up the soil. That's a big job. Garden, furniture, and reveal. And now we're going to reveal the garden furniture. Da, da, da. <laughs> there we go. So it's an aluminium set and it's from a company called Moda Living. Moda Furnishings. You've done that with well. Yeah, it's from, a, well. it's from a company called Moda Furnishings and yeah, we, we love it, don't we? We love it. Way back when we were deciding what we were going to do, we come to the decision that we were going to do, do panelling and there's a picture bing, there which is of the panelling that we sort of based the idea on. I was looking for ages and I was going to use a sort of like just a two by one piece of timber but then my dad found on Facebook there's a place in Birmingham where they sold this it's called shadow gap panelling so it basically looks like the picture but it's just they link together and you pin them together. Instead of having to like physically space the yeah. panelling yourself. Like we did upstairs really in the a lot, Yeah, in our yeah. bedroom, it takes ages, doesn't it? Really it would have taken a bit longer. Guys, it is a midweek, Thursday afternoon. Just finished work and we are gonna do a little bit of work in the garden. We went to get the cladding at the weekend and now we just need to put the frame in on. So I collected that from the builders merchants yesterday. And basically what we need to do is put horizontal joists along the back so that when we put the cladding on they've got something to fix to. Um, so yeah, I've put a couple on just to test out, test out the right size drill bit. And um, we're putting them in with these, which are masonry and concrete fixings. So they look like screws, but you just hammer them in. So you drill, drill the hole and then just hammer them in. noise of the wood and the bricks scraping together. My whole body's like, I think my hairs have stood up. I don't know if you can see that. I realised when he is putting these in that he doesn't want to pierce this. A couple of the times I'd like drilled all the way through. Gone through and obviously if we pierce this then the water's going to seep into the bricks. So yeah. he's come up with an idea to put this Oh, that's that. hot. I just it will be, yeah. <laughs> um, this tape around it so he knows so exactly like, where to go in. So it doesn't go all the way through, but it's long enough for one of the screws to go into. Not just down there for dancing. Not just a pretty face. Woo! Today's the day. We 
finally are going to start properly cladding the planters. I feel like it's just going to really make the garden like different. I don't see that many cladded planters about and yeah, just really excited. Are you happy with the outcome? I am actually, yeah. That's Very far. Bright. Yeah, no, it does look good. Does look good, yeah. We've had a casualty. <laughs> it's not even funny. <laughs> I, I just shot a, uh, one of the nails straight through my finger. Luckily, it like missed my fingernail by like, like literally a couple of mil. Mm -hmm. End of day one, or shall I say afternoon one. There's the entry wound. There's the exit wound. So I did it a little bit wrong yesterday, so I've had to take a load of it off. Well, first glance, you can't see any problems, but when you look over there, it dips down, so I need to take the middle section of that out. I've actually come up with a better system this morning. I had to think about it last night, and I've run this line across. So I've put one end and the other end, and they're both level with each other, and then run this line in between. So then I'm just basically working up to that line. So the key to successful DIY is to learn from your mistakes. It's about four o'clock on Sunday now. I'm just going to show you what we've finished off on this weekend. We've done all of this side down to here, hey Mills? And then all of this side, like I showed you earlier. I calculated it and there was a lot of, a lot of the timber, unfortunately oh, yeah. was like not in great condition. So it wasn't able to be used. I was like, cause it's quite thin. There was lots of like knots out of it. So it was like holes all the way through. Bearing so, in mind he'd driven to Birmingham yeah. to get this wood. We've got the majority of it done. But then had to go back again to get it. It's like two, it was like a two hour drive or something yeah. over there, which isn't ideal. But the guys over at Scott's Wood Timber helped us out and they cut all the wood for me, ready to go. Yeah, and it was just like it. straight into the back of the car. We couldn't believe it when you were like so close to being done and then had to go back again. Mm. We were like, oh my right, God. So I've got to now rip this down, see where that line is, because that's where the step goes. It doesn't do a full whip. Oh, that's going to be tricky. So I'm going to attempt this. This is the first attempt. <laughs> Heart palpitations over here at Joe using all this equipment, guys. And there we have it. The accountant come <laughs> DIY master. <laughs> what? Oh, you haven't even cut it off. Oh my God, <laughs> you got carried to away and you haven't even cut it off. So happy that we did that instead of rendering. Yeah. I feel like it's like the main feature of the garden now, isn't it? Like yeah. it's like, uh, it's also quite unusual. Like, I don't reckon that many people have no. panelled planters. Usually you'd have like sleeper planters or like yeah. timber ones. Timber ones whereas yeah. ours are, they look like they're made of timber, but they're actually made out of blocks. Yeah. So it's good. As Joe was panelling all the planters, which obviously took ages, I then started on painting the fences, which again was a job that like in your head, everything in the garden is like so easy. But the reality is it just, is quite a massive space out there and the amount of fence panels we had i started off painting it with a brush and quickly realized that considering you need to do like at least three coats on a fence panel it was mm. taking a look at this stuff all over our fence that's come in from the fields we have no idea what it is or why it is but i think they've been letting the fields across the back grow like wild i think they're going to build on them so this has literally been coming into our garden for like two months i've just hoovered this whole fence panel which looks a lot better and ready for painting and now i've basically got to do the whole rest of the garden paint we are using is ron seal paint ron seal very kindly gifted us this paint to use on the fences we've gone for the color warm stone because i feel like it's going to go really well with the patio you can already kind of tell how it's going to match up with the patio so we're happy with that, aren't we, Joe? Shake.
the end of Friday and we're just about to go into the garden and do some painting. My friend has actually kindly lent us a sprayer because he saw that we were painting by hand and he's got a paint sprayer that he's lent us to lent to us. So All right, so I've used the plastic that we used to line the planters just to cover up the tiles because obviously we don't want paint getting on the tiles. Sprayer is making the fence literally like a million times quicker. Look at that. We also got some pots of Rontil paint, which we were planning for this video to paint the planters with. But honestly, it's like October now. It's raining. Like it's so nice today, but normally it's raining, and obviously we need to allow time for it to dry. Do like multiple coats. So we've decided to put them in the shed. And we're going to paint the planters next summer. So yeah, come back next time, summer we? and we'll we'll paint the planters together. But we're going to do them like a white ash colour. The design we've gone for is like a beach club vibe, isn't yeah. it? So like yeah, when we've got the, beach club they're vibe. currently like like wood colour. So it's a bit like Scandinavian, like sauna vibes. Yeah. But, but when we go, <laughs> it's when, not we've, that great. when we've finished, when we've painted it, it's going to be like beach club vibes. We're going to make a beach down the bottom. It's no, we're like not sand. getting out of the beach. We're going to dig a trench yeah. at the back and there's going to be like a pool down there. Oh my goodness. It's going to be a diving board off the, off the planter. Oh, right, okay. You then did the tops of the planters after that, didn't you? Well, yeah, my dad, quite my cool. dad did. Your dad my dad's did, the yeah. My dad's the tiling expert. But yeah, no, we could. So when we initially ordered all of the tiles for the patio, I overshot the order because I was thinking that For we- For once. Yeah. Dad done a well good job of that, didn't he? He did, yeah. Like, I'm really like, good. how how have you managed to do the tops of the planters with them yeah. tiles? Like, because there was points where you were questioning about just doing it with wood. Yeah, there was, yeah, because it was, it, it was like, I didn't know what it was going to look like because you can get like coping stones which are like purposely made for like oh, the right. tops of planters. And I was like, do, is it like, not, like, is it a dumb thing to do it with porcelain? Like, yeah. it's going to be exposed edges, and like, then some of them are cut edges, so it's not like doesn't look particularly great on some of them. But we're just going to get some trim to go around the side, and and when we put the lights on underneath. Oh yeah, you got. You haven't mentioned yeah, about so the lights. Yeah. For the lip, that the reason why I wanted to do the lip was so that we can get like LED strip lights that work on the Alexa. It's so cool, like shine so, down. Yeah, so they'll shine down. If we, have like an outdoor movie, if we have like an outdoor movie night, we can have them on, or we're gonna do that eventually. Yeah. So, we won't keep you guys waiting any longer because we've been keeping you waiting for about six months. Should we do the reveal? Yeah, let's do the, the reveal. reveal so far. We're gonna call this Garden Running Part Two, but I should think there will be a part three next year, to be honest. Yeah. So. Finally, Garden Reveal Part Two coming your way, coming to our garden. The long awaited. Garden Renault Part 2. Woohoo! We're in autumn sun now. That's how long it's taken us to do this garden. It's taken six months. us to the lovely sponsor of this video which is Temu. We absolutely love Temu. We use them all the time. You might have seen them before. You can get Temu on your desktop online or you can download their app which has some amazing offers. Absolutely anything that you can think of for your garden, Temu will have it. We managed to put so much nice stuff in our garden at such a low price. This little fire pit is from Temu and we are genuinely obsessed with it. It changes the whole mood of the garden and it's so easy to use and was literally about £12. Another good thing to get from Temu is garden lights. There is so much to choose from. We got these little dandelion solar powered ones and we stuck them in the planters. And honestly, they just light up the planters in the evening. It's so nice. Without these, I genuinely don't think the planters would look as good. We also loved picking out some garden cushion covers for our new furniture. There was, again, so much selection. We went for these orange patterned ones and we love them so much. And then to add to those, we also 
got an orange blanket just to make the garden furniture seem extra snuggly in the evening. I feel like this is given proper autumn vibes. I absolutely love it and the quality is really good. They also offer lots of practical things for the garden as well. So we got garden gloves and they're literally like less than two pounds, which is amazing. And we also got one of these tap covers, which is just an absolute essential for the winter. If you don't have one of these, make sure you grab one. So if you're looking to elevate your garden on a budget, we would definitely recommend you check out Temu and see what they have to offer. Candles, lanterns, you name it and you'll find it on there. Download the app, go online, check out the vouchers because there's always so many different discounts, free delivery and we'll make sure that we link everything that we got below. So next year, when we're getting the garden ready for summer next year, this is gonna be like we've sort of saved this area for an outdoor kitchen, sort of a barbecue area, and like hopefully we'll get like some sort of power into it and there'll be like a fridge in there, but that's gonna be a different video, so, just, so stay tuned a, to our channel. A garden kitchen. An outdoor kitchen. We come what back next think? year. What do we think to the garden? Let us know in the comments if you like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah do you like it also let us know in the comments if you think that the paneling is a good idea because yeah. a lot of you guys we actually asked you guys in a vlog whether we should do paneling or rendering and loads of you said paneling so let us know what you think of the end result of it we just wanted to say a massive thank you to temi for sponsoring this video if you guys are looking for anything for your garden or even your house they have they so have much stuff, stuff on, on there it's, so it's amazing well. if you've enjoyed this video then drop it a like subscribe to our channel and you can stop moaning about us not posting <laughs> Garden Reno Part 2 because we posted Someone it. Someone cracked me up the other day. They were like, I'm spitting feathers. Yeah. You've got it now. Let us know what you think. We appreciate you always. Bye. Peace.